I was with Bishop W.A. Patterson. Yeah, God doesn't have his picks. If you do what people in the Bible did, you will get what people in the Bible got. God is not a respecter of person. He's a respecter of principles. If you look at all throughout scriptures, he said, if any man, that's not exclusive. I, I told someone that heaven will not have subdivisions. It is a gated community, but it will not have subdivisions. It was the it was the pastor Richard Lee, the original pastor of Bellevue Baptist Church before Dr. Adrian Rogers took over. He said that when I get to heaven, I can't wait to go on the Negro side of heaven and hear one of those great Negro spirituals. How many of y'all know that heaven won't have subdivisions? <laughs> Bishop G has a good wind up on any funeral. He said that there are three surprises that you'll have when you get to hell. The first one that you'll get is people that you knew won't be, knew wouldn't be there, will be there. The second one is that the people that you knew would be there, won't be there. And the third and greatest surprise is that you made it at all. I will be with thee and I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. In verse 6, be strong and of a good courage. Yeah, God, what, what it will take in this day, it will take that you will go the extra mile. The Bible says in Psalm 34 and 19, it said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. The Bible says, Paul in writing to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 6, 4, verses 16 and 18, Paul said, for this cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory as we look not at the things which are seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but we look at the things that are not seen, for the things that are not seen are eternal. How many of you all believe in something that you can't see? The Bible said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you can see it, if you can feel it, if you can taste it, if you can touch it, it ain't God. See, the world teaches you, saints, the world teaches us in school that you have to see it to believe it. But I'm bringing you good gospel news on this morning that you got to believe it if you want to see it. Yeah, we serve a God that says in Hebrews 11 and 6, now uh, without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I was just thinking, I was sitting here, I don't know if a list, uh, list, uh, one of the brown girls is in here, but I, I was just thinking about mother, when I meet people from Southside, that there's a difference. That you and Bishop Smith has installed something in these people when they go out. Never do you hardly see somebody gonna go out and severely embarrass Southside. It says three types of people. You got those folks that are saved, you got those folks that are not saved, and you got those folks that saved for real. <laughs> Southside got a bunch of saved for real folks. <laughs> Be strong and of a good courage. It's gonna take strength to make it in this day. Yeah, yeah a lot of people that we've seen, how many, a couple years ago, you, you've had people to come here that was the hottest thing in the church now. Now nobody knows where they are. People are falling. People are falling all over the place. He said, be strong and of good courage, for in this people thou shalt divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto thy fathers. Some of us are ready to walk in the things that our grandmothers and grandparents prayed for. Yeah, our grandmother, I grew up in a house with eight or nine people in the house, and now we, we can't hardly get together when we have family get together because there's not enough room with all the cars. God's called us a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. Look at verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous 
that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Proverbs 14 and 12 said, there is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now this is something for the young folks. Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. What this scripture means that you need to serve God before you felt the bitter appeal of life. The easiest time to be saved is when you're young. I'm just hitting 40 now, and you go to the doctor. I said, well, doctor, what's this? Uh, what, what's this color? Uh, what's the mold growing above my eye? What's this? What's that? He said, son, that's called growing older. <laughs> How about doing it while you got a lot of strength? If you read the death notice, I've got an appointment. I have to read the death notice. I mean, it's amazing who you would miss. And then you see people, I, my cousin passed a week ago, and I'm 10 days older than her. That brings mortality to your, to, to, in, into your reality. You won't be here forever. Right. Psalm 90 said the days of man are what? Three score and 10. Yes. And if by reason of strength, they be four score. Bishop Patterson said, if you're 69, you shouldn't enter into a 30-year mortgage. <laughs> How many of y'all know that one day we're leaving here? Yeah. One day we're leaving here. Yeah. The Bible says in Romans 13, the night is far spent. Yeah. The day is at hand. Let us put on the Lord Jesus Christ, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Yeah, I'm hearing that any minute that God's going to, uh, that we're going to hear God's call. That God's coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Yeah, it's going to be payday. Uh, they used to say payday Sunday. God's ready to do something that we've never seen. Time is winding up. The devil's team is on the field and they're playing together. Why is the church fighting? I'm staying in my lane, mother, but, but come on. Why are we fighting? We got a world to save. You don't have to be up here behind a pulpit. Every day, I find a way to say something to somebody. You can just bump into them and just give them a word of encouragement. That one word of encouragement may keep them from going to the bridge. Come on, all of us are saved. Do speak in tongues as the Spirit give utterance. Finish the sentence for me. If it ain't one thing. Now, how many of y'all know all of us are saved, but how many of y'all know that the devil comes? The devil is a strategic opponent. The Bible says that he roams to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says that he comes as a roaring lion. How many of y'all know that the devil will not hit you with one thing and leave you alone for six months? No. No. Devil can mess with your body, yeah. your money, yeah. your honey, all at the same time. Yeah. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. See, this is the advantage that we have. We don't even have the excuse that they had. This scripture was written to a church that only had the Torah, that only had the law, that only had the Pentateuch. They only had Genesis. They only had Exodus. They only had Levit Leviticus. They only had Numbers. They only had Deuteronomy. Right. This is what the Bible says in Hebrews 8. But now he have obtained a more excellent ministry yeah. by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. You have a better covenant. Amen. You have a better covenant. Yeah. Say you have a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Right. Amen. You got a greater promise than they had. Yeah. You will be graded differently than the patriarchs of old are graded. They had the little five books of the Torah. You had the whole of the scriptures, 66 books. The Bible is Christocentric.